In the live morning news, the host that runs the invitation to culture introduced today's guest, who is Korea's best star magician. Let's welcome Mama Sung. Everyone clapped welcoming the star guest magician. On the stage, glittering with lights, a male guest, cladded in a tailored suit, introduced himself as at the National SN, Mama Sung. As soon as he introduced himself, he realized he butchered the introduction. It should be SM and not SN. He flusteredly recorrected himself repeatedly SM, SM. Sexy magician, as if his entire life depended on this introduction. After the event, Mamasun drove back to his place. On the phone, someone asked where the national SN Mamasung is now. Annoyed, Mamasung told the guy on the other end to stop it. It already bothered him enough. He doesn't need Yonggal to join the bandwagon to tease him. Yonggal looked flaming with anger and shouted to the phone that Mamasung made a mistake during a live broadcast. Does he think that escaping is going to solve anything? Mamasung is blowing up on the internet right now as the national SN. And this was not the first time. It happened last time with Graviola, too. Mama Sung said via Grala and everyone went nuts about it. So how could he let it happen again? This is why Yonggel suggested he not do. Live broadcasts. Mama Sung, full of positivity and sparkles like the glittering lights said, people grow up through making mistakes, Yonggel. Yonggel looked at all the comments in social media calling Mama Sung idiots. But this did not discourage Mama Sung. He thinks the real idiots are those that are calling others idiots. Yonggel read one of the comments. Someone posted that Ma Ma Sung is only handsome. God is fair. That kind of comment is indirectly calling Ma Ma Sung an idiot. Still trying to maintain a positive outlook. Ma Ma Sung reasoned that if he were any more perfect than this, he would have been dragged to a state institution to be dissected. The hopeless Yonggel concluded that Ma Ma Sung is really brainless after all. Still driving and chattering happily, Ma Ma Sung asked did he do drugs? Gambles? Or sell the country? His brain is doing just fine inside his skull. The only thing Yonggal could do is spare some of his IQ and give it to Ma Ma Sung. Suddenly Ma Ma Sung roared to sue that asshole and hung up the phone, leaving Yonggal motionless. Ma Ma Sung continued to drive and complain that it was just a slip of the tongue and everyone went nuts about it. He would not let himself get discouraged just because of that. He is handsome, tall, has a chiseled body, and is skilled. Not only that, he, the greatest magician in the country and popular, is Ma Ma Sung, who can return alive even after being thrown into a fiery pit. To sum it up, he is not the average Joe. Nothing can put him, the great Ma Ma Sung, under pressure. He continued to stroke his own ego with positive affirmation, until a voice coming from above shouted for him to move, get away, move aside. Of course, Ma Ma Sung is still in his own world. He wasn't paying attention to what's around him. He continued to drive smoothly, unperturbed of everything around him, until something landed next to him. The sudden thump frightened him speechless. While he was still trying to make sense of what's happened, the thing next to him shouted, Hurry! Step on it! Hurry up! The frightened and confused Mama Sung screamed, Ack! What the hell are you? The woman next to him replied loudly back, Me! Me! I'm Chundong! Chundong! The shaman Chundong! Shaman! Shaman! Is this short for super crazy woman? The shocked Mama Sung question? Regardless of how crazy things seemed, he still asked the woman to get off right now. Suddenly the woman stepped on his right foot that was on the gas pedal and ordered him to go. Mama Sung screamed how can the crazy woman stepped on his legs too? Then some men in black came out of nowhere, pointing to the car, shouting, get her. The car suddenly sped up leaving the men behind, disappointed. Mama Sung asked the lady, who is she? Who does she think she is to ride in his car, and what the hell is up with those dudes in black suits chasing after her? Eh? Chanong looked confused. She told him she was busy giving them her middle finger, so she couldn't hear. He questioned. Why? Has she realized whose car she is in? And she planned this right? Is she a Saisin? Chanong looked at Ma Ma Sung with a ghostly expression. An image of another person appeared in her vision. She muttered. Your Highness, the Crown. Prince. And then fainted. WDF. Why did she faint all of a sudden? Ma Ma Sung, who hasn't fully grasped the situation in its entirety, yelled for her to get a hold of herself. The scene changed. In Zhengzhong, January 7th, year 38, two women sat across each other in a dimly lit room. A lady asked, Did you come because you know who I am? The other lady replied, Well, of course. Aren't you, 
the greatest in this country, when it comes to being the vendor of obscene novels, Shaman Chunong, right? Shaman Chunong replied excitedly, holding several books in her hand. You've come to the right place. I shall provide you with passionate and fiery nights from this moment forth, madam. The female client states boringly with her arms crossed. Read that? Read that too? Read that one? Already? Read that one twice? Which surprised Shaman Chunong. She questioned, You've read all these? The female client stated that she was quite disappointed. Rumor has it that Shaman Chunong would read their fortune and then recommend the perfect obscene novel for them. The shaman felt disappointed. She told her client that if the client already read all those books, then she doesn't have anything else to. The client interrupted the shaman that there is another book she is looking for. A book that has recently been turning the capital city upside down. It's about the ten divine women, and some extremely huge something, nurturing 100,100 big, d asterisk CK soldiers. That's the most forbidden book there is, even just its possession warranty death by dismemberment. The client threw a bag of gold in front of the shaman and said she can pay as much as the shaman wants. So please, provide her the book. Sweat dripped down her face as she hesitated, but eventually, the shaman took out the book. Well, since you've made such a sincere request. Ecstasy appeared on the client's face and she stated, that's the one. Then she suddenly turned around to blow a whistle. Men rushed and shouting, how dare you distribute obscene novels? Bind this high treason criminal for the crime of distributing forbidden book and disturbing the country. Someone asked her if she does not know that anyone involved with this book will be punished as a traitor. She was ordered to be sent to the capital as a result. Suddenly, she beamed with joy like she hit the jackpot. I would like that. Hurry, hurry up and take me there. Tie me up and let us go right now. The men were confused senselessly while Shaman Chunong thought she will finally get to see him. In the capital's dungeon, Shaman Girl was tied and imprisoned in a dark cell. A voice was heard reading the book. Leading as much as 100,000 big D asterisk X, the ten divine women who came down to earth established a country named Sungjin of unparalleled obscenity. A forbidden book that even encourages treason, nurturing 100,000 big D asterisk CK soldiers. Is it true that this profane book is still widely distributed outside of the capital? A handsome young man, introduced as Crown Prince Li Ho, held the book as he questioned the shaman girl. And she called herself a civil servant? A Song Suching shaman. On the side note, Song Suching is a place to pray for the well-being and blessings of the nation during the Joseon era. He asked if she did not know that he was the one responsible for eradicating this forbidden book. The shaman girl answered, how could she not know that? With a pitiful expression, she pretended to cry and complain that she had been abused by both her stepmother and stepsisters. She doesn't even have anything to wear for the village feast. The crown prince yelled, What stepmother and stepsisters she is talking about? She says nothing but nonsense every time she opens her mouth. She knew she couldn't pretend anymore. So she got serious and reported that a fire will break out in a month's time. This report shocked the crown prince. The shaman girl continued, Three months ago, Song Suching was abolished and driven out of the capital. Since then, they have all their eyes and ears covered. She had no other choice but to use this method. In her head, in the first month of the year of hair, she could clearly see the picture of a big fire ablazing the castle walls. They were soon interrupted by a voice shouting, Jailbreak. Your Highness. A voice shouted from the door. Eunuch Joe. The Crown Price called. Eunuch Joe blocked in front of the Crown Prince and yelled, there are assassins. Please stay away. I will take care of this. Hurry and take your leave, your highness. The shaman lady was concerned even though she was imprisoned. The crown prince decided to take her with. As they fled through the corridor, an assassin caught up to them which the shaman lady pushed back with her hands. Chenong, the prince shouted. She told him to stay back. She is fine so he should leave this place. The crown prince saw that the shaman lady's neck was about to be cut with the sword yet she still shouted for him to hurry up and leave the place. Before anything could happen, all the swords flew upward to the ceiling. This phenomenon scared everyone shitless, thinking it was the work of ghosts. Everyone looked at the crown prince, and he does not look right. They screamed, His Highness has been possessed by a ghost. The prince answered, That's right, I am a monster. I am none other than the possessed crown prince. At that moment, all the swords headed towards the assassins.
In the dungeon corridor, the swords and the bloody corpses lay dead on the ground. Shaman Chundong was momentarily terrified, still trying to come to her senses. The crown prince looked like he was still in his own world, fearful of the power he possessed and hadn't come to reality. Then Eunuch Zhou arrived asking if the crown prince is all right. Eunuch Zhou told the crown prince to leave the place for him to take care of. He must hurry up and make his way back to the Donggung Palace. The crown prince, still in a trance, muttered, the stench of blood stinks. Eunuch Zhou ordered Shaman Chunong to hurry up and take the crown prince away to which she complied. She led the crown prince outside and there were only the two of them at the moment. The moon was bright and full, illuminating on them. As they came to a stop, the crown prince could only think of the blood that covered his body. He looked at his own two hands, mortified and asked, exactly, how much more blood is he supposed to shed for this fight to finally end? Seeing blood covering the crown prince from head down, Chenong ripped off a piece of cloth from her dress in an attempt to wipe off the blood from crown prince's face. She approached him with genuine concern. He finally came around when he felt the touch on his face. She gently wiped off some blood and before she could proceed further, he grabbed her hand and called her name. He told her, the only people who are aware of his power are only her and eunuch Zhou. So, does she, Chenong, not fear him? for he is a monster, the possessed crown prince. He said so with guilt in his eyes and Chunong was touched, not by his monstrous power, but his kind heart. She told him, did he not save her with that power? Heaven had bestowed that power upon him. And, whatever he tells her, she will not fear it even in the least bit. And, later on, his highness will become a virtuous and benevolent king. And so, taking the letter. And, from benevolent, he will be given the title in Zhang. Side note, in Zhang is a title given to the king after his death to honor his good deeds. He leaned in closer to her and a relief was seen in his eyes. He muttered, in Zhang, that shall be my title. She further stated that not long ago, she suddenly looked into the lineage of the Joseon dynasty. She does have the power to look into the future after all. And these words of hers saved him from his misery. Crown Prince Li Ho smiled and replied, all right. If you, the best shaman in the Joseon, have said so, then even if I die, I won't die as the crown prince. With that he leaned onto her shoulder before falling unconscious. Chenong tried calling him but he did not answer. It was when he fell onto her that she noticed he was bleeding from a wound. Some of the blood was from the shoulder stab. Chenong shouted for Madame Zhang Jiam, the female doctor in the palace. This surprised the doctor as to how Chenong was able to come back to the palace again. Chunong told her that it's not important. His Highness's shoulder was struck by a sword, and he was at the Donggung Palace. They both ran while Chunong updated the female doctor. She tried to stop the bleeding, but the wound just didn't stop bleeding. She was about to continue explaining, but then she bumped into a man, and they both fell to the ground. Upset, Chunong asked where the man came from suddenly, and soon noticed the attire was weird. She had never seen such garments before. But why does she get the feeling that she had seen this man somewhere before? The man shouted, Fire. This alerted Chunong, Fire? The man pointed behind him, The fire is. Chunong looked behind and saw the palace behind was on fire. She knew it was the Donggung Palace. How could there be a sudden fire? His Highness is still inside? Someone please do something? People shouted in distress. No one could go close to the palace due to the heavy fire. Inside the palace, the crown prince laid on the ground unable to get up due to injury and loss of blood. As his consciousness was fading, he was still thinking about Chun Ong. She, without fearing for her life, swooshed in through the burning door, calling for him. Before she could do anything, a ceiling collapsed, falling down to where she is. With no time to react, the debris fell straight down, but before she could react, the injured crown prince used the remaining of his strength to garner his power to stop the debris. He hugged Chunong in his arms while the other hand is directing the debris. The fire blazed wildly surrounding the palace. Although injured, he hugged her and continued to save her with his power. He was still trying to stop the debris from falling onto them. If he should fall, then she will die. He gritted his teeth as he protected her. He muttered that if it's her, he will never let her die. Chunong cried in his arms and told him to please not mind her, for she is just a mere shaman. But he is the highness, he is someone who will rise into power in the future. She begged him continuously, 
to not mind her and leave the place quickly. Her tears flow like waterfalls. Shandong. Shandong. The crown prince called her name several times before telling her that. Status. Customs. The throne. All of them are nothing more than some useless illusion. He was foolish, but now he has come to realize. The crown prince chuckled, holding on with every bit of willpower left in him. Shandong. Because to me, you are not just a mere shaman. Then he kissed her. After giving her a kiss, he said, Chenong, I, if it's you, I will never let you die. With all his might, he used the last remaining power on him to send her away. Realizing what he was doing, she screamed for him, but to no avail. She didn't have the power to stop him. All she saw was his hand, the blazing fire, and his words, I love you, Chenong. Remember me. Everything went black. Back to reality, still in the car, the unconscious Chundong wept calling, Your Highness, Crown Prince. As tears dripped non-stop from her shut eyes, Ma Ma Sung couldn't understand what was happening to her. She fainted and now she is even crying. Back in the hotel, in a nice modern style, spacious luxurious room, Chunong who was now resting on a bed, finally came around. She opened her eyes to an unfamiliar environment. She sat up, looking around, and even before she could make out the situation, the man stood in front of her, showing off his sparkly self to her. He, the national, S.M. Mama Sung. Shandong felt so grossed out that he gave himself the nickname as the national sexy guy. She totally hated him as he creeped her out. Flustered, he yelled that he didn't give the name to himself. He didn't want to explain further, so he told her to forget it. Still high up in the air, he asked if she really had no idea who he was. Before she could answer him, he told her to hurry up and get the hell out of his place. She made a hateful expression at him telling him that she planned to leave even without him telling her, for him not to let her see him again. They both can't stand each other. She took a couple steps to realize there was something she needed. Chenong went up to Ma Ma Sung and asked without any shame if he could lend her some money and some clothes also. He, who thought too highly of himself, yelled at her what made her think he would do that. She, who has no shame, nonchalantly told him she cannot go home looking like that. He asked then why did she wear something like that in the first place? She begged, come on, just lend me some clothes, the National SR. Then she noticed a wardrobe room full of clothes and sped towards the room, without any manners. Ma Ma Sung was more bothered by the fact that she didn't call him properly than her lack of manners, corrected her, it's SM, SM, SM. She replied, like she cares if it's SR or SM. She carelessly opened the door and bumped a vase on the high shelf on the side of the door. The vase shook and slipped over the edge, startling both Ma Ma Sung and Chunong as they watched the vase fall. Ma Ma Sung shouted stop and hugged Chunong. The vase stopped in mid airs as he commanded. At this moment, Chunong was reminded of the dream, the phrase, I love you, Chunong, and her heart thumped. She looked at the guy and thought she was sure she had seen him somewhere before. Watching Ma Sung protecting her and guiding the vase, Chenong felt like she had lived this scene before. The man's face whom she couldn't see clearly, but the phrase, I love you, Chenong, ringed in her heart. Without realizing what had happened to her, tears streamed down her face. The vase finally fell down and shattered a foot away from them. Ma Sung asked if she was alright. Chenong, still leaning close in his embrace, didn't react as she was still immersed in that sad memory. Ma Ma Sung called out to her again asking if she was all right. Still no response, but the tears are still coming. Flustered Ma Sung commented that she is completely out of it. I love you. Chunong unconsciously muttered out the love phrase. What? What the hell are you saying all of a sudden? He questioned. Chunong, who was still immersed in those distant past memories, replied, We've met a long time ago. Somewhere. Back then, you saved me like this. The same way. Ma Sung let go of her and replied, Didn't you say you have no idea who I was earlier? She nodded and answered, She still didn't know who he was. A vein popped on his face because she still doesn't know who he is. Ma Ma Sung yelled, Then what the heck do you mean we've met before? Just say you see me for the first time today. Chanong gestures for him to stop with her hand and tells him that she is serious. She kinda gets that sense. She got the feels. About to lose his self-control, Ma Sung questioned with gritted teeth, what feels? Chenong blushed and said, Ah, uh, why does my heart ache so much? Did you used to love me at that time? 
Masang exploded and roared. What kind of crap is that? And if her heart aches, doesn't that mean that she was the one who loves him, and not the other way around? She pressed her temples and concentrated. She sure felt like he was the one who loves her. It totally feels like that. Masang told her to shut up and cut the love crap. Who says love like that nowadays? And FYI, she was totally not his type. He went on about his type of woman. She is innocent. Delicate. Elegant. Short hair. And there she has his ideal woman info. In other words, his type of woman is a complete 180 from her. Pointing his finger at her. So if she is trying to use this unusual concept just to get his attention, then he is sorry. It's a complete failure. Shenong trembled in disgust. You, who's trying to get his attention? She hated him, like for real. Ma Sung retorted that he is a very popular magician. Suddenly, her attitude changed again and said, He is exactly alike, like that man. Even his power, too, is like that man. He halted in shock. What? She stated that he possesses a special power. He can use his mind to literally move anything as he likes. And didn't he just use that power to save her? He looked horrified at her conclusion, as if he didn't want her to divulge more into it. With a stern look, he ordered her to get out, right now, and stop her nonsense. While pointing his finger at the door to which the door swung open by itself, she told him so. He denied, because he didn't use his power to open that door. Entered through the door was a man in a suit, wearing spectacles. He called, Mama Sung, why haven't you been picking up my calls? Then he noticed another person. Eh, hey, isn't she? Running from behind that man was another man. He shouted, isn't she the woman who got photographed together with Ma Sung this morning? Huh? Shenong questioned. She was clueless to what the man said. The man continued, Everyone throughout the neighborhood filmed them two driving in a car together. The internet is blowing up right now. Just what the hell were them two? Before finishing, she pointed her finger at the man and said, You're eunuch Joe. This startled the man shitless. Wah. What? Eunuch? Impotent? Eunuch means impotent, right? Finally the statement settled in and he roared. Who are you calling impotent? Woman. Hey, I'm completely alive and kicking. I'm a national judo silver medalist. Still pointing her finger at him, Chanong replied, No, not impotent. Assistant eunuch. Ma Sung couldn't hold it in and burst out laughing. Pfft. She said Yongal is impotent. As if a light bulb lit up in her mind, Chanong remembered. She turned to Ma Sung and said, You're the crown prince. The crown prince of Josian. The crown prince. Ma Sung repeated and suddenly light up happily. He raised two peace signs and exclaimed, Hell yeah. I'm the crown prince. And you. You're eunuch Joe. The angry young gal yelled at Ma Sung. Just who the hell is this woman? What makes him so into her all of a sudden to bring her here? She's not even his type. Ma Sung happily agreed that he was right. It was a good thing young gal brought it up. She was totally not his type. Then he angrily pointed his finger at Chandong and said she didn't bring her here. She jumped into his car on her own. The man wearing the spectacles went up to Chandong and covered her with his suit jacket and asked, What about him? What kind of person was he? She thanked him but was confused as to who he is. He introduced himself as the representative director of Feel Entertainment, Noah Philip. She apologized for not knowing and told him she had only been there for six months. So she was not sure who all of them were. He mistook that as she came from abroad. She told him it was not like that. Confused, he asked, where is she from? She whispers to herself nervously that she was actually from Joe. Josian. He asked, Josian. Did she mean North Korea? Chenong explained, no, not that Josian. The real Josian dynasty. She is a shaman from the Josian dynasty. Her name is Chundong. She told them, they may find it hard to believe. But no matter how much she racked her brain, except from what she just said now, she cannot seem to remember anything else. Her statement rendered them shock, speechless. Right. I see. So that's your story. I get it. Loud and clear. So now get out. Ma Sung gestured with both hands to the door. The spectacled guy looked relieved. Maybe she was just making something up. Chanong continued. The crown prince she knew had the same ability as he does. The prince can use his mind to move things as he please. Again, 
Ma Sung had the terrifying expression, but he soon covered it up with a big bright smile and explained that it was called a magic trick. And he is a magician. His specialty is transport magic. He cannot tell her the trick because it's a secret. If she got it, she should stop with her nonsense and hurry home now. Shanong was adamant with her conclusion. She said he definitely is the same as the crown prince. Yes, very well. Ma Sung tried his best to hide his anger and took the role of the crown prince. He commanded her to hurry up and go home. Not wanting to back down, she said their meeting is definitely not a coincidence. Ma Sung pointed his finger at her in a fit of anger and shouted that it was because she jumped into his car in front of the hotel. What? Hold on. We're in that hotel. Asked the shocked Chandang. Ma Sung told her with no mercy, that's right. He already told her they're in the Grand Gyeongbok Hotel, which is where they are. Fiery Chunong asked if he is stupid. She tried so hard to run away from this hotel. Why would he bring her back here? Ma Sung screamed back because he lived in this hotel. Philip interrupted their fiery fight and asked Chunong with concerns what she meant by that. Why was she running away from this hotel? What happened here? Chunong shifted his attention to Philip and told him that she was looking for a job in a hurry and got hired for a part-time job in this hotel. But, Chenong was hired to work at the hotel pool party when a man cornered her and told her she was cute. How much did she make from working there? She held back and told him that she just made enough. The guy asked if she wanted him to introduce her to a better part-time job. Chenong tried to remain polite and told the guy no, and she's good but in hindsight, she want to poke his eyes and then break his nose. The man asked her if she wanted to know what kind of job it is first. She said she is not interested, so she doesn't need to ask, while mentally telling herself to hold it in. Hold it in. She just barely got this job because she doesn't have any ID. The man touched her face and told Chundong that he'll give her ten times more than her current wages if she goes to his room. All she has to do is stay put. Unable to hold it in, Chunong landed a blow on the guy's stomach. Chenong told Philip that after crushing the insides of the man's stomach a little, the man started screeching in pain, calling the security guards to catch her and bring her to him. She had no choice but to flee the scene, while being chased by those guys in black suits. Ma Sung interrupted, and that's why she jumped into his car. Chenong looked pitiful as she answered back. Yeah, doesn't he think she is so pitiful and couldn't help it back then? Any human being would feel sorry hearing what happened to her. The ungentlemanly Ma Sung yelled for her to not make him laugh. How is she going to take responsibility for everything? A scandal broke out because of her. Chenong told him she was sorry. She is sorry for getting him in trouble because of her. And thanked him for saving her twice today. Her apologies instantly calmed down the angry Ma Ma Sung. She told him she will help him with anything she can. After a moment, Ma Ma Sung turned around and told her to forget it. He'll pay for her taxi fare, so she should just go home. Philip told Ma Sung that it's best if he sent her home himself. Ma Sung growled at Philip why would he do that? There is no way. He's not going to do it. But eventually, Ma Sung ended up driving Chenong home. In the car, he was pouting while she gave him directions to her house. She pointed her finger at the direction that he just needed to drive into the first alley over there. The first alley? He questioned. While observing Ma Sung, she felt that it was weird. Every time she is with this guy, she can remember the past. The closer she gets to him, the clearer the memory. Maybe he's the key to reviving all her lost memories. But how can she check that? Should she hug him again? Her house is just around the corner. If she doesn't do it now, there might not be next time. But how? How should she do it? While lost in her thoughts, Ma Sung asked where he should go next. Chenong replied that it's that house. The one with the jujube tree. He reconfirmed that. Western-style house with the jujube tree. She answered, yeah, that one. The two stories western style house with the jujube tree. After he pulled up in front, he asked if she seriously lived in that house. Confused, she asked him why. He asked her with a serious look, who is she? What? While she was in a dilemma of what she should do with him before he leaves. He turned around and asked why she was living in that house. And she plunged in to kiss him, leaving him shocked and dumbfounded. As she was still kissing him, he thought if she was nuts, why would she suddenly kiss him? But he didn't want to stop the kiss, so he caressed her neck and pulled her in for deeper kisses. They both responded to each other. He leaned in even closer. While he deepened the kisses, she reached her arms across his back for a tighter embrace. 
As the kisses continued, she had a flash. Someone told her, remember me. Chenong opened her eyes and pushed Ma Sung away. She told him to wait. They both painted heavily for airs as they separated from each other. She carefully looked at Ma Sung and saw that same person in him. He wanted to continue to kiss, but she asked him to wait. He told her, it was she who started it, and leaned in for another kiss. They continued kissing while hugging each other tightly. And this brought back memories of the young Ma Sung, sitting on the ground terrified of the two people in front of him. A man that looked like a priest and a woman both, reciting O Lord as they stared down at him. The young Ma Sung cried in tears, clasped his hands together in a pleading gesture and called, Mother. Holy Father, it's my fault. I did wrong. Please don't be like this. The psycho duo pair did not pay any attention and continued on with what they're about to do. The mother replied, I gave birth to the child of Satan. The Holy Father continued to say, Oh Lord, please help this child as whip the tree branches at the young, terrified Masung. The Holy Father shouted loudly as he swung the tree branches, rid him of Satan's power. The young Masung blocked his head with his bruised, injured little arm and screamed no. In that moment, the light above shattered into pieces. This frightened both his mother and the Holy Father as he got scraped by broken debris on his face. Scared out of his wits, he ran away and shouted, he cannot handle this. The mother screamed, Holy Father. The priest screamed, you must be part of a cult. With that, they both ran away with fears. The young Ma Sung cried as he watched his own mother and the Holy Father ran away from fright. Then, appeared in front of him, was a young girl. There was a warm light shining from behind her as if she had descended from heaven. She approached him and asked if he lived in this neighborhood. He told her yes, he lived there. The girl told him she just moved into this neighborhood. She walked up and sat next to him and asked, What is he doing, sitting alone here in the alley? He didn't know how to answer her, and could only stutter shyly. Just, just, because. She saw that he is wounded everywhere and asked how he got hurt. Masung lied that it's, just, just, soccer while feeling guilty about lying in his situation. Noticing his shameful expression, she did not probe any further and asked which grade he is in. He told her he is in fourth grade. She was excited and told him, she is also a fourth grader too. So they're the same age. She clasped his hands and spoke full of enthusiasm, which startled him. She asked for his name, and he told her, Mama Sung. She exclaimed happily, Really? Her surname is Ma, too. They both have the same last name. He asked for her name, and she told him, her name is Harry. Then he finished her introduction with, Potter? She let go of their hands and turned around dejectedly. Gosh, seriously. She knew he would say that. Everyone has been saying that ever since Harry Potter came out. Ma Sung apologized. She turned around and said, she is Ma Harry. The young Ma Sung smiled warmly, reciting the name Harry. Back to the present time, Ma Sung pulled away from the kiss and muttered, Harry. What? She was confused. Then he saw the face, and it wasn't Harry. He let go of Chundong and shyly questioned, Why? Why did she kiss him all of a sudden? She, just. Because, the closer she is to him, the more she can recall her memories. So, but why did he? He didn't want her to ask him questions, so he interrupted, telling her that she needed to move out from this house. What? Chundong was confused as to why he would say that. While Ma Sung was flustered, what has gotten into him? She doesn't even look one bit like Harry. She continued to ask why. He said because the house gives off a bad vibe. An elderly lady, standing gloomily like a ghost, stood next to his car, glaring at him. He asked if he could help her. She pulled his hair and yelled, You damn bastard of a brat. Ack. What the? What are you doing to me? Ma Sung asked. You're the landlord here? Right? Yeah. I'm sorry. I was wrong. I'll take back what I said about getting bad vibes here. The elderly lady continued to pull and yank his hairs. Ma Sung reasoned that the way she is doing right now is totally adding credibility to what he just said. She yelled back, So you want to keep spouting nonsense, you damn brat? Cursed you. Curse you. Curse you. You damn brat. She pounded his head as he tried to protect his head as he shouted, Gah. The bad vibe he's getting at this place is only gonna get dirtier. The old lady yelled, How dare the damn brat try to seduce an innocent child and kiss her? And landed a blow on his head. Grandma! Chenong shouted. The old lady huffed and huffed after that final blow. 
Ma Sung noticed that he is now covered in rotten trash, leftover food scraps, fruit peels that send him into a rage. He called her a crazy old hag. Offended by the phrase crazy old hag, the old lady was about to jump into another sprawl, but Chun Ong stopped her. She held her back and shouted, Grandma, no, that's enough. He's not a bad guy. Then she turned to Ma Sung and told him to leave quickly. Ma Sung was flaming at this point and stuttered, He is going to be a bad guy from now on. He is going to report this crazy old hag right away. Chenong reasoned what he was going to do if everyone in the neighborhood showed up because of this. So does he think his scandal is not enough? Does he want to be the topic of gossip too? Hurry up and leave. Ma Sung tried his hardest to calm down the flame in him, and once the flame disappeared, he turned around and shouted that he was just letting the old hag off the hook this time. The old hag retorted how dare he. Chenong holding on to the old lady told the old lady to calm down. Hold it in grandma. Ma Sung sped off, but shouted loudly that the vibe here is bad. The old lady asked Chenong if she is sure that he is not a bad guy. Chenong replied, Um, yeah. Probably. The old lady turned around and questioned angrily, What's the deal with that brat? And why didn't she call or text at all? And what's with her clothes? Chenong explained that she was doing a part-time job at the swimming pool when something kinda came up. Well, anyways, he was really not a bad guy. He was the one who helped her out. The old lady asked if she was sure. She is not saying that just because he's handsome, is she? Maybe what she meant was he's not a bad-looking guy. Chenong denied vehemently, knew. If his good looks are worth 100 points, then she'll give him 100 million points for canvassing his face. His prince disease is far and above the value of his face, enough to drive her mad. Then she calmed down and admitted, he's got good looks. Grandma replied that he's got quite the curious physiognomy. Chenong was shocked. Huh? Why? What's with his physiognomy? Grandma thought of the face and stated, he's handsome. Chenong brushed it off. Oh, seriously? Grandma always liked handsome guys more than her anyways. Grandma readily agreed with the statement. Yeah, that's true. I like handsome boys. That's true, but that boy is fated to die twice. This scared Chun Ong for a moment, but she wanted to remain positive and beamed happily. What is Grandma talking about? How can someone die twice? Grandma pondered and told her to just wait and see. In hindsight, Chun Ong was worried as Grandma had never been wrong with her reading. Grandma then changed the subject and asked why they were kissing. Chun Ong blushed flusteredly. Oh that, well, that was, so that guy. That guy is the key to her memories. The closer she gets to him, the memories of her past seemed to come back little by little. That was why she was the one who initiated that kiss. The old lady asked if she was able to recall anything. Six months ago, when she first got here, it was snowing. She sat in front of the door and introduced, It's me, Chenong is here. Shocking the elderly lady. Grandma replied, Yeah. She suddenly showed up, said that, and then fainted. After that, she couldn't recall anything and she knew absolutely nothing. Does Chenong have any idea how much effort she put into caring for her? Chenong replied, she knows. That's why she is feeling frustrated too. But then, after meeting that guy, she is starting to recall something, and she is getting some strange feelings. It's kind of faint, but she doesn't really know how to explain it, but it feels like a destiny set by the heavens to help her find her memories. Something like that, she guessed. Grandma joked, but what to do? That destiny sent by the heavens has been beaten to a pulp with a garbage bag. This totally angered Chun Ong and she asked, Why did Grandma have to go and beat him up? Why did she have to throw a garbage bag at him? Grandma reasoned, That's because there's got to be one or two damned bastards who would use her who is amnesiac and clueless about the world. On a side note, Grandma is right. Chun Ong crossed her arms haughtily, It didn't matter. She just needs to find him. She memorized his car plate number, and she knows the hotel he stays at. Grandma flirtatiously questioned, You get to go in and out of the hotel room that, that, handsome guy stays at. What did you do? You're making me jealous. Chenong told Grandma it was not like that. When she fainted all of a sudden, he simply allowed her to lay down for a bit. Grandma pointed at Chundong and asked what was the part-time job anyways? She was not even fit enough. Chenong will only be worrying her. Chenong asked, then is she supposed to just play around? She has some shame too. Grandma doesn't even have customers these days too, and Grandma is making her worried also. They both yelled at each other, 
draining their energies. Finally, they came to a stalemate. Chunong asked, Our Madame Beck is really skilled, though. So why are we not getting any customers? Grandma finally told her what Ma Sung said was right. To be honest, this place reeks of bad vibes. Chenong finally asked what she had been meaning to ask. Is it true that everyone who used to live in this house has all passed away?